So in this section, we're going to define trigonometric functions um, using the unit circle. So the unit circle, we've got a circle with one unit radius. So the unit circle has a radius equal to one. Okay. So this point right here on the right, this is one comma zero. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a t-axis that is tangent to this point here. So let me see if I can move this. There we go. So maybe our t-value, like maybe I have a t up here. Okay, so this length right here. Pretend like this is like a string and we're gonna wrap it around our unit circle. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it around the unit circle. So I take that string and I wrap it as far as I can go around the unit circle. Maybe it stops right there, okay? So that distance we're gonna call S, okay? which is equal to t units, okay? So my, my arc length is t units long there, okay? And so the question is, what is this point right here, p of x, y? So that point right there, where is that point located on a unit circle? Well, in short, that point is defined to be cosine of t comma sine of t. So all we have to do to figure out where a point lies on the unit circle is we need to know how long, how far we've traveled on the unit circle and then evaluate the cosine of that distance and evaluate the sine of that distance traveled, okay? So we've got some definitions here. So let t be a real number, so any real number, and let p of Okay, let's just call it P, which is equal to like a point, be an X, Y point. On the unit circle. Okay. That corresponds Two t, okay. So then, what has to be true, All right? Well, the sine function. So let me write this out. So sine function associated with t and the y coordinate point of p is denoted by sine of t equal to the y value. Okay, so to get the y value, I plug in sine of t. All right, the cosine function to get the uh, associated t with the x coordinate, this is the cosine, abbreviated cos, cosine of t, which is equal to the x value. Okay, now the tangent, the tangent, okay, function, this is abbreviated tan, T-A-N, of T, and this is equal to Y divided by X as long as X is not equal to zero. 
Okay, why does it not equal zero? Because we can't divide by zero. So if x isn't equal to zero, the tangent function associated associates with t the ratio of the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate to get that point. Okay, now um, we're going to talk about some reciprocal functions here. So these are related to the first three. So I'm going to use a different color here. So I'm going to have the cosecant function. Cosecant function. This is CSC of T. That's cosecant. It's the reciprocal of the sine, so that's 1 over y, okay? As long as y does not equal 0. Can't divide by 0. Okay, the secant function, maybe you see how these go with each other. This is the reciprocal of cosine. So this is the secant of t is the reciprocal of the cosine, so that's 1 over x. So that means x does not need to be equal to 0. And the last, the reciprocal of the tangent, that's the cotangent function, is defined to be cotangent of t equals, well, what's the reciprocal? Uh-oh. What's the reciprocal of y over x? It's x over y, as long as y does not equal 0, okay? All right. Um, so because we use the unit circle in these definitions of the trigonometric functions, Sometimes they're referred to as the circular functions. Okay, so these are these are the circular functions. All right. So those are the circular functions. So um, now what I want to do is I want to show you how we're going to take these circular functions and actually find a point. So let t equal, or let's say, let's say let t be a real number and p equal negative one-half square root 3 over 2 be a point on the unit circle that corresponds to t. And I want to find the values of sine t, cosine t, um, tangent t, cosecant t, secant t, and um, cotangent t. Okay, so all the circular functions. All right. So how am I going to do this? Well, it you know it never hurts to draw a picture. Okay, so let me do a little bit better circle here. Uh-oh, that's not a circle. So, so never hurts to draw a picture. Now, negative 1 half x value, so that's like over here. And the square root 3, that's like up here. So this is the point right here. It's negative 1 half comma square root 3 over 2. Okay. So my t is this distance traveled around here okay so how do I how do I do this well we go back to how we set up the problem here that point right there this point here is defined to be cosine t comma sine of t okay 
So that's your big trick right there. What I always think of, you know, and this may help you out, is I think my X is my cosine, and I think my Y is my sine. Now this is true for a unit circle, okay? So the radius here, the radius is equal to one. Okay, so that's, that's what's going on here. So if this is a unit circle, this is true, okay? So I wanna find the values. So right off the bat, I know sine of t, well, that's equal to what? That's my y value, right? That's square root three over two, okay? Cosine of t. Cosine of t, that's the x value. That's negative one half, all right? So we know that right off the bat, that's given to us. Now we've gotta start thinking a little bit more. Tangent t. Tangent t, how is tangent defined? It's defined as y over x. So the y value is sine of t, and the x value is cosine of t, okay? So what does this tell me? This is y over x, the y value is square root three over two, and the x value is negative one over a half. Now look, we're gonna do this a lot in here, so maybe this is this is a good little trick for you to learn. When I've got fractions and I'm dividing, okay, there's a technique and it is goofy, okay? I call it KCF, okay? So it's keep, change, flip. Okay, keep, change, flip. So what am I doing? I'm gonna keep uh, square root three over two the same. So I keep this the same, square root three over two. I change, so I'm gonna change division to multiplication, and I'm gonna flip the denominator. So I do the reciprocal, so this becomes negative two over one. And now I'm gonna multiply. And when I multiply, what happens? Well, it looks like those twos are gonna cancel each other. So, what do I get here? I'm gonna get negative square root of three. So my answer here is negative square root three for tangent t, okay? All right, now, the next one I'm gonna do is the cosecant. And there's a reason I'm writing them in this order, because the cosecant, remember this is the reciprocal of sine, so the reciprocal of y is one over y. So that's one over square root three over two, right? So if I keep change flip this here, this becomes keep one the same, change division to multiplication, and flip the denominator, okay? And so what do I get? I get two over square root of three. Now, some people would be upset with where this answer is right now. Tell you when you go to university, they're probably gonna be okay with this answer right here. But your textbook, they want you to uh, rationalize the denominator. And so all that means is whenever I've got this little square root here, I'm gonna get rid of the square root. And how do I do that? I multiply the top and bottom by the same thing. And that turns the numerator into two square root three. And the denominator, what's this? Square root three times square root three, that's the square root of nine, which is just three. And so then that's your final answer right there, okay? Um, cosecant, we got that done, secant is the reciprocal of um, cosine. So this is one over x, which is one over negative one half. Keep change flip gets me what? One times negative two over one. So that's just negative two. No biggie right there. And then there's one more. There's one more and that's the cotangent. Cotangent t is equal to what? Well, instead of y over x, it's x over y, right? So x over y, that's gonna be what? That's gonna be negative one half divided by square root three over two. If I keep change flip here, what do I get? 
I get negative 1 half times 2 over square root 3. So this is what? This is cancel with my 2's, and I get negative 1 over the square root of 3. Okay, negative 1 over square root of 3. You can leave it like this, or you can multiply through if you're wanting it to look like the back of the book. And so then you get negative square root 3 over, and then we talked about that just a second ago. That gave me square root of 9, which is 3. So my answer, negative uh, square root 3 over 3. All right, cool.